Hello, David here, and welcome to this tutorial on two advanced features of the Process Modeling Flow Editor in Visual Components. Those features are called Visit Limit and Optional Process that are available inside a flow step. So let's study the optional process first. So I will start my flow editor and then I will change the view a little. So in this flow, a palette enters this terminal. From where the products on the palette will go to vertical 1, vertical 2 and the horizontal machine process. And then they need to return back to the palette in this terminal process. So by default, when you add process groups in a flow step, they are executed in a top-down order of priority. So if there are products leaving this terminal process, they will try to go to vertical 1 first. And if that process is occupied, then they will use vertical 2. And if those processes are occupied, they will go to the horizontal process. So the process mode we have set is first available process. And now if I run the simulation, we will see that when the palette enters and the first product leaves, it will go to vertical 1. And then after processing, the operator will pick up the product and place it back on the palette. But if we think about the product, in this case it's a valve block that requires multiple drillings, and it doesn't matter in which order processes are done for the product, but the product should visit all of these processes, not just one. So how do we simulate that? Of course, we have the mode in our flow steps, and we can change it from first available process to all processes in any order. So now the product can visit vertical 1, vertical 2, and the horizontal machine process in any order. But the product does not leave this flow step until it has visited all of these processes. And this is still a priority or top down list. So vertical 1 is prioritized if available when the products enter the process. Depending on the processes used and how many products we push into this flow step at the same time, we may have issues with the flow. So in this example, we will actually saturate this work area. So the first product goes to a process, then the second one will go to the next process, and the third product will go to a third process. But now this first original product wants to get into this vertical 2 or horizontal process, while the product from vertical 2 wants to get to vertical 1 our horizontal process, and so forth. So we have saturated the system and none of the products can move. Of course, this could be solved in a couple of different ways. We could use machines that are capable of switching the product. For example, if there is a turntable, or we can limit how many products we push to this work area at the same time. So if we have three machines, and we push only two products, then there will always be a free machine that a product can move to. But we also have a third option. So if I reset the simulation, we could add a fourth process group into this flow step that acts as a buffer. In this example, it's a table that we will add to the flow step as table area one. And internally, this is just a table top buffer that can contain 10 products. But what we can do is, we can select this process and mark it as is optional. And you can see that the visualization changes and this is a fully internal buffer. So only the products in this particular step can enter this tabletop. And now of course, we need to add the transport links back and forth from the machinery to this new table area one. So now if we run the simulation, you can see the products go from and to this table area 1 process, only if the next process step is not available. So now the product is returned to the table, 
and we now have an empty slot and the new product can go to a process. So this buffer, or is optional process, is fully internal for this step. So the products will not go directly from a previous flow step to this tabletop, nor from a machine to a buffer, and then from a buffer to the next flow step. If that functionality is required, I could add a buffer process before and or after this flow step. So this feature prevents deadlocks in all processes in any order process steps and enables the simulation of, for example, trolleys, pallets and tabletops that are used in actual production as intermediate buffer places or just a temporary surface where an operator can place a product when swapping products inside a process machine. And let's now edit the flow a little by adding new optional flow steps with a marking process included, pallets have more chances to visit the process. So if I add a chance for the pallet to go to a marking process before the work area one terminal and for example, before the pallet needs to enter the work area two terminal. And you can see that the visit limit is automatically applied since there is already an instance of the same marking process on the right in the flow which has the visit limit applied. And now I can select these flow steps and mark them as is optional. And notice how the appearance of the process label changes in the flow step. And now if we run the simulation again and jump to a place where we have saturated the production, now there is a marked palette. And you can see that its color has changed and it is waiting to visit a work area. And now a pallet that is unmarked, that has already visited a work area, will go to marking. And another unmarked pallet is now in the work area 2 terminal. And a pallet that is already marked will go to the work area 1 terminal. And now the pallet that has visited a work area and then went to be marked will leave the area and a newly introduced pallet has the option of entering the marking process. So it enters at the first instance of the is optional marking process. And now that the pallet is marked, it doesn't need to enter the marking process again here or here. And why the last pallet marking process in this flow is not set as is optional, is because we make sure that the pallet enters the marking process at least once before it leaves the area. But now the pallet has an option to visit the marking process if work area 1 is not available, since there is a pallet there already. So the pallet has a chance to go to marking at that point. Or after work area 1, if work area 2 is not available, and the pallet is not marked yet, it has the option of going for marking. And then after visiting work area 2, if the product has not been in a marking process yet, we force it to go there, so we don't have an unmarked product leaving this work area. This same feature can be used to create a similar but slightly more controlled process than we had in this all processes in any order flow step in work area 1. So if we look a bit closer at this area, we currently have a flow that goes from the work area 2 terminal to a small drills process through this table area 2 buffer that is already set as an is optional process to the drills process on the other side and from there to a coordinate measuring machine and then back to the pallet in the work area terminal. So if we now run the simulation, the flow again is direct. So the product goes to the small drills process and from there, after drilling and the general machine process, the product will go through the buffer to the drills. And of course, in this case, 
Since the drills process was available, the product did not enter the buffer. But what if, again, we have a case where the product can go to either of the processes so they can be in any order also here? But we want to have more control. So we have, for example, this table area buffer always there between the processes. So in that case, I can use the same visit limit feature and also the capability that the flow steps can contain multiple processes. So here I can add the small drills after the drills on the other side of the table area and vice versa, add the drills after the small drills on the other side. And now for both of these, I will enable visit limit by enabling the is limiting visits option. So now when the product enters the small drills, we already mark that it has been there and it needs to go to the drills process. And on the other side, if we have already been in the drills process, we need to go to small drills. So now if I press play, the first product will go to small drills because it is higher in priority and we remember that we have a top-down priority. And then after processing, we go to a buffer because the next process wasn't available. But we fill this process since it was available. And again, we place the products in a buffer. So we swap and bring the product back and introduce a new product. And now the processed product that has been in both processes will go to the coordinate measuring machine. And from there, back to the palette as a processed product. So here we have a tested processed product. So now we have practically created a similar solution to the all processes in any order case. But now these processes are totally separate flow steps and they can be anywhere in your flow. There could be multiple processes between them. For example, there could be a conveyor system. In this case, there is just a process area. There could be a shelf buffer between the processes or flow steps and still the product enters these flow groups or process groups only once. And those were the advanced flow features. And this concludes the lesson. Thank you for watching.